Welcome, friends! Today I want to show you the most totally radical game for the Sega Genesis. Vector Man. Everything about this game is explosive and dynamic. Even the title screen is epic as it blasts you with this sick Euro beat. Vector Man is a fast-paced action game with that pseudo 3D rendered sprites look. And just look at these flags blowing in the wind with all that parallax in the background. It's f sick. This game hits you with one hell of a first impression as you immediately drop into the Sega logo as you turn on the game. And you can run around and shoot stuff in here until you find and destroy that hidden light switch that's hanging just barely off screen. And it kills the logo. That's hilarious. Every one of these old Genesis games shows you this logo before the game starts. And turning the logo into a tutorial level like this makes a statement. It lets you know right up front that this game is gonna hit different. And I mean just look at this guy. He's made up of 23 individual moving sprites. And then he turns into all this different stuff, all Yoshi's Island style. Everything from a jackhammer to a race car. It's like there's a new one in each stage. And then it also breaks up the action with these mini-boss, sort of bonus-looking stages, where you play as another unique form that's also just for this particular battle. And these mini-boss stages are also played in a different perspective to sort of show off the graphics of the aging Genesis. You see, Vector Man was made very late into the Genesis's era, and it was intended to be Sega's attempt at what Donkey Kong Country was for the Super Nintendo. Vector Man went crazy, and they used it to show that the Genesis wasn't over with just yet. It got put on all their premier marketing stuff, too. They had this $25,000 Play to Win campaign, and that's like $50,000 in today's money. So there were supposed to be these 100 lucky cartridges that had a secret screen after beating the game that had a phone number to call. And you would call the number to send in your copy of the game to exchange it for a regular one and to claim that hula bula. I'm sure that not every one of these has been recollected and destroyed by Sega. So if you got one, that would be a very rare game indeed. And then they also bundled it with the Model 2 Genesis. It's a good one to start with as your first Genesis game. It's one of those platformers where the screen moves maybe just a little too fast. It certainly gives you a good sense of speed. Although it is really easy to just run into enemies. But you can also spam the attack and just shoot everything that's off screen. I really appreciate how hitting enemies puts them into a stun animation so they won't be able to attack or shoot at you while they're taking damage. So you only really get hit when you make an honest mistake. Which for me is always leaping blindly off the top. I gotta hit that big air. All this parallax and the speed of the camera makes it very satisfying. Enemies also have this satisfying screen shaking explosion whenever they die. Everything explodes, just as nature intended. And just about everything takes multiple hits to take down. And because of the stun, it feels good to just drop in and pump the button on enemies. Or like these TVs that you destroy to get items and power-ups out of. It's very satisfying to pump shots into these as they spin around faster and faster until they explode. The only enemies that die in one hit are the swarm kind of guys that respawn. They're like your opportunity to farm health back. And they basically always come up in the same pattern with a group of three or four, and it feels good to one-hit them all in a row, each shaking the screen. This game has a good balance of going between slow and careful levels, and then rewarding you with a fast-paced segment where you just blow everything up. All of the environments look really good too, and fit the vibe. And going back and forth between nature and factory stages really helps keep it feeling fresh. Vector Man goes everywhere. The first stage hits you with this airport looking stage, but we also go to the ocean, and the arctic, and even to the moon. And then of course we go to the Technodrome on the moon. All the little background details are really neat too. Just look at these screens. Or like the little bugs flying around in this light. There's even some neat effects like sun dogs. It just looks great all the time. And this game is actually kind of hard. 
And in true Genesis fashion, you have to start all over from the beginning when you die. The bosses are really cool though, and they're all pricks. This first one that's an airplane makes for a good first boss. It teaches you to duck and run while shooting up. This one is like a pterodactyl or something that then turns into a bear for its second phase. I don't know what in the heck this one is supposed to be, but it was an absolute pain. I thought that this one was kind of funny. First you got a sign right here that warns you before you get ambushed by midgets. This one is some bull though because Vector Man is kind of thick and it's really hard to avoid this humpy snake that they turn into. My favorite boss though is this one towards the end where it's got like three phases and they come out of these blueprints. This one isn't so bad after you know how to do it. Look at this fish guy though, I like the way he runs at you. But this one is also some bull. You just have to take the hits and hope that you're lucky enough to get a good pattern because you only have 40 seconds to fight it. And of course when time runs out you die and you have to start the fight over. The last boss is really cool though. You start by coming up in this tornado and blast debris. And then when you get to the top, you hop along floating housetops while you blast at him. And then if you fall, the tornado just pushes you back up. Finally, the first platformer I've ever played without a bottomless pit. Thank God. And after you beat the game, you get to see all of the names of the enemies that you wouldn't have even thought had names in the first place. So many games of this time did that. I think it's really fun to see all the names, and it's become a cliché. Of course the big bad is called Warhead. I love enemies that have really generic names like that. Vector Man is exciting and dynamic all the way through. Everything explodes and it just feels good.